okay. Well, it, it's okay because it, it automatically records on uh, on YouTube. So we are live. Oh, we're live. Yeah. Yes, we are. Yes, we will have backup on YouTube, so yes. we're good. Yeah. So, uh, so I have my post it. So it I is. Have my, I have my Friday post it. That's it. <laughs> it is Friday, April twenty second, uh, two thousand and twenty two. I was about ready to think it was Monday again. I don't know what's wrong with me. I, I just, you know, maybe I just stopped caring about what time it is and everything. So <laughs> yeah. hmm. I don't, I don't know why today feels like Monday, but no, it is Friday according to my post-it. <laughs> so we're good. All right. Well, here's our intro now that we've got our bearings. All right. <laughs> comic book readers and collectors. My name is Randy Zimmerman and I'm here to introduce you to the Fellowship of the Indies. The Fellowship is a group of creators that came together for a promising business deal that fell through. But don't worry because what came from the deal were nine spectacular comics from diverse genres and creators. All nine books are printed and ready to go along with metal bookmarks, retailer levels, and even month two books which are being specially made for a short period. Just know that by pledging, you'll be getting nine great comics, 32 pages of book for the awesome price of $25 plus shipping. That's over 250 pages of incredible indie comics. So secure your copies today. Hey yo, and hey. we're back. Hey, good morning. <laughs> good morning. Good morning. And yes, just so everybody knows, Fellowship of the Indies, uh, it's still on Kickstarter. The best deal in crowdfunding you can get today. Like uh, like the man said, uh, 250 pages for $25. Or if you prefer a more traditional crowdfunder, you get one book and eight for free <laughs> <laughs> for $25. So there you go. So good morning. Good morning, everybody. Good morning, everybody in the chat. Good morning, other people watching. Uh, yes. So uh, let so uh, yes. Yeah, so so let me uh, uh, get uh, this officially started. Hello, everyone. My name is Daphne Lage, and I'm a cartoonist, illustrator, and comic book artist from New York. I have been self-publishing comics since 1992, and I am known for my funny animal fantasy adventure, Tall Tales, and my medieval fantasy soap opera, Eagle Raven, Heir of the First Unicorn. Uh, you can read both my comics online currently at Tall Tales, T-A-I-L-S online.com and egoworks.com, E-G-O-W-O-R-K-S. And you can check out my videos on how I make all these comics on YouTube at Daphne Lage, L-A-G-E art. And speaking of YouTube, if you are joining us from regions beyond, from Twitter, from Facebook, from wherever you saw these links, come on over to YouTube, come on over to the Region Network, hit that subscribe button, hit the bell, get notified every time uh, we go live with a show and show the YouTube algorithm some love and join our sexy people in the chat. It's the sexiest people, the sexiest chat that you will ever see on YouTube. So join them today. <laughs> so Nita, tell the people who you are. Uh, my name is Nita Lanning. I am a writer, vlogger, blogger from Southeast Louisiana. I am CEO and executive producer of the Rage and Two Broadcast Network. Oh, there we go. So, so yeah, so yes, just so I can show everybody, yes, this is how stupid I am. I uh -oh. have a, I have my post-it that says Friday on it to remind me that today is Friday <laughs> because for some reason. 
it feels like a Monday. It so, does. It does. <laughs> you know, so uh, so today I have uh, a lot of stuff to do today. I have to go to Ikea and pick up legs for uh, my desk. <laughs> so I got to I got to fix, yeah, I got to fix my desk so I can pull it away from my janky ass wall here. <laughs> so, uh, so finally, when the guys come to fix it, they don't have to, you know, things are easier to move around than the way they are now. Because right now I have a cabinet that's completely rotted to the floor oh, because geez. of all the flooding <laughs> that's, uh, that's been happening in here. So oh, that sucks. Fun, fun times, fun times. But uh and uh, but because of that new wall, I finally found a new chair for myself. <laughs> oh, good. Yeah, I was uh, watching someone else doing an Animal Crossing live stream, and I really, really liked their chair. They had one of those uh, those racing gamer chairs type thing that I really liked. So I was able to find uh, the website because luckily they embroider that on on the top of the chair, and. Um, and they had a chair that it's like, I go, that's it. That's the chair I need. It's like, it has lumbar support. It has neck support. It has everything support because my, my hips are hurting from all this work that I'm doing because this is, I mean, I swear, this, this is what being an artist is like, you know, it's just like, oh, great. It's like, we have everything hurting except we're not athletes, <laughs> but everything hurts anyway. Oh. Uh, so yes, yeah, so uh, <laughs> we're always furries. Yes, even uh, even if uh, they deny it, everybody <laughs> has a persona. <laughs> so um, so yeah, so I I'm looking forward to uh, <laughs> yeah, exactly. I am I am looking forward to um, uh, the, the the changes that are happening in the office. So uh, so I. Well, you wanted them anyway. Now you're just being forced by nature. Right, to exactly. Do it. Absolutely. Yes. Um, we we're suspecting that it's an issue with a gutter that's literally feeding into the like it's either broken or something, and it's feeding into the office, which is oh, why shit. I get so much water all at once whenever it rains. So yeah. So hopefully uh, it won't be too traumatic. So. <laughs> So, uh, and well, what's going on with you, Nita? Uh, just working on network stuff, working right. on some new shows that we want coming up or we have coming up. Got an awesome announcement. Uh, C. Michael and J.D. Calderon will be doing a crowdfunding classified show for us. But I, I'm kind of trying to keep the guys limited to two shows a week. So we've taken C from Zimcast and we are adding Christy Shin to the mix. Yeah, I know. So that's that is going to be exciting. very exciting. <laughs> that's going to be exciting. It's like, uh, yeah, it's like I really uh, I, I, I caught I caught them on the Zimcast the other night and their rapport. I really, really dug their vibe. Uh, 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 Christy insanity. Stone and, uh, and Randy. So. Um, yeah, so I'm really excited that that's going to be a regular thing now. So yes, so if you're curious how that's going to come out, um, yeah, so you can check out Tune in Wednesday. <laughs> Tune in Wednesday is 9 p.m. Uh, and and yeah, and and you know, join the fun there. Um, yeah, we have a yeah, we have a lot of organization going. Who knew running a YouTube channel would be so? It's chaotic daunting <laughs> it, 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 it worked but you know what and, and growing so fast yeah uh really puts the pressure on so you guys pardon our progress as we shift people around and possibly show times just bear with yeah. us because uh baby stepping Good. right it's like uh, we're gonna have to get one of those animated geo cities banners you know right under construction with the flames and <laughs> those animated gifs that everybody had you know back in the, day, in the early days of mm. the internauts so yeah <laughs> Put that that's, up. that's pretty much it oh motherfucking paypal oh finally, the paypal saga finally taken care of i was able to touch my money yesterday there we and go. i immediately so moved it all out of my account and then they sent me a message then they sent me a message and they told me hey your funds are you fucking right they are paypal right. fuck you yeah no 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 Up it's like morning, you, have, you are having the hey george speaking of george's <laughs> um uh, yeah because you were having a hell like they locked your account and, and, and all, all because of a refund 
right? That's you all it was. To, yeah, you did a refund so that you can issue an invoice and PayPal freaked out. Oh yeah, they flipped and locked it. your account. I mean, and then the link, the okay, so they send you through. You have to go through the bot process first. Hey, Christy, we just talked about you. Uh, <laughs> they, uh, they, they, they blocked it, and then they'd send me to where I had to go through a bot, and the bot would tell me to go to the resolution center to find the links I'd need to send them whatever they needed right. to verify the account or whatever. Well, I'd get all that information, and I'd go over there and I'd click the link, and the link was broken. Right. And, and of course, and it was just the same. Over yeah. And, and because over it's a and bot, over. you ended up in a loop. Yes. Yeah. Repeatedly. And so finally, I just started digging, 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 digging. And I found an old PayPal 800 number out of Omaha, Nebraska. And I called it and actually got through to somebody in corporate. <gasps> no, ma'am, I did not use it in vain. Right. There and we within go. A minute, she's like, this is not my field. But if you disconnect, here's my here, here's here, here's my extension. You call me right back. And she sent me to this other lady. And within within five, 10 minutes tops, my PayPal was back to real normal. live people. I, I swear it's like these companies, they they run they, they run their shit on purpose like that. They do. You know, they, because they, they want really... people to cut their losses and be like, oh, well, shit, I'm, I can't well, get Well, I guess back. this money is ours now. <laughs> and I'm like, it will not happen. I will fight yeah. you. <laughs> yeah. No, no, Christine. Uh, we, we were talking about how excited we are that you will be joining us regularly on Wednesdays. Yes, on we Zoom were stoked. So, yeah, so we're very excited. Actually, a, a lot of people in the chat are excited at that. So welcome. Welcome aboard to the House of Crazy. Well, <laughs> actually, that would be Sam's show. <laughs> yeah, I don't, we don't know what this is. This right, is, we, we don't know what this, this is. is a mess. Right, right, right. Welcome to the shit show. <laughs> so, um, so, yeah, well, at least that's one thing out of the way. At least you don't have to worry about that anymore. So remember, people, do PayPal is not a bank. It's convenient, but it is not a bank. And uh, yeah, do not keep keep as minimal money as possible in there. You know, just enough that, you know, like you can still do stuff with it. But if something were to happen to your account, it wouldn't be uh, <laughs> it wouldn't be uh, like drastic, you know, or, or dire for anybody. But yeah, it, it is not a bank. Do not store money in PayPal. So that's uh that's uh, uh -oh. <laughs> uh -oh. uh -huh. so that's uh, that that's the uh, important thing for everyone to know. So, uh, oh yeah, so today I have a little show and tell. I got oh. another. Uh, I, I I got another unboxing. I got another oh. unboxing today. Oh, yeah, it's like uh, it's it's a Kickstarter because when I got it, um, I I actually forgot what I had ordered. And it was just like, oh, what is this? What is this? And it's like, oh, and it's like, it's like Correos de España. And I go, oh, did I did I ask for anybody to send me something from Spain? I don't remember. Yeah, because I got I got family all in Spain, so um, I wasn't I, I was sitting here not being able to remember what this was. <laughs> and then and then I noticed the logo on the side, and I go, oh, oh, oh this is a Kickstarter. This is a Kickstarter. So. Um, let me see. So I want to try something a little bit new today. So I'm going to add in my ooh, an extra camera today uh, so we can take a better look at it. So, so yeah, so this is a Kickstarter. Uh, yes, yes, from Spain, a Palma de Mallorca. <laughs> And um, actually, this is a lot smaller than I had um, expected, but, uh, but, um, I don't know. I, I think it's a fun little thing. So this is, what this is, is a, it's kind of like an animation kit that's based on a book that came out, wow, it, it's like decades ago. I mean, I, I'm pretty sure it's still in print. It's by Ollie Johnson and Frank Thomas called The, the Art of Animation. These are two of the last nine old men that worked with Walt Disney and they created these gore this gorgeous book about their entire process on how to animate and, and, and all that. So there was an artist who, um, who did kind of like a mini version. He's a, he's, was an act, he's an actual animator and he did a mini version of the basic principle, the 12 basic principles of animation. And he did it, if I understand correctly, he did it as a flip book, in flip book style. 
Nice. So yeah, so as you can see, it, it's it's a small it's it's a small book. It's supposed to be like kind of like a reference. And oh, look at look at how tiny these are. Look at these. So it's actually like two two flip books. Oh boy. Okay. Yeah, the packaging is is really interesting. So and yeah, so it comes in this uh this sleeve. And let's see. Oh, look at that. And then so if you're studying animation, it, they even have um these little, I guess if you cut them out and you make little di like like dice. So if you're like indecisive as to what you want to do, you roll your little animation dice and then it's like you study and then you study what um, pops up. So here you have slow in and out, staging, squash and stretch, anticipation, pose to pose, overlapping. Uh, this one has appeal, exaggeration, arcs, solid drawing, secondary action, and timing. And I thought that this was like a really important piece of reference to have uh, because especially now that everyone is using, well, a lot of people, I don't know about everyone. It's like a lot of people kind of use like, like flat animation, but it's kind of like, it, it's not like, I don't know. It's kind of like, like more like puppetry. I think uh, John Celestri said it was more like puppetry rather than animation because they're right. just moving little shapes around rather than actually using what this book talks about, the actual 12 principles. And let's see. So let's see how this, this works. So they, they look like, they look like matchboxes. So here is, okay. So this is the first book. Okay. Oh, that's volume two. So let's, let's start with volume one. So the yellow, the orange one is volume one. So this one has squash, squash and stretch anticipation and staging. It's the best way. Yeah. <laughs> and I think, all right. So what it does is that, oh, okay. So you have the principles in the book. So here you have everything, you know, you have an explanation and then what it does, like you flip it, and then oh, nice. it gives you an actual example as to what it is those principles are. Remember when we used to make these in school, you know? Oh, yeah. And flip it and do it again. Yes. Yeah, so, and this one has, oh, all right. And if you do flip it, yeah, post to pose, overlapping, and slow in and out. Again, it explains, expl and then it's like you flip it to kind of get that. Nice. So that you can you can study the actual like individual uh, drawings. So that's actually pretty cool. I like that. I like that. Um, okay, so here's the second one. So this one is arcs, secondary action, and timing. And again, they have the instructions. And then we'll just uh... there we go. Nice. Yeah. And see, in the back is exaggeration, solid drawing, and. Me too. Yeah. And. I mean, look at that. I mean, that's so. Remember cool. when they put those suckers in Cracker Jacks? Like, Cracker Jacks right. had actual prizes. Now no, they've got, it, like, those fruit stripe gum tattoos. Right. No, it's like, it's like, remember? Actually, it's like, I, I'm pretty sure, you know, it's like they used to have, like, these small books that would have the little animation in the corner. I mean, I, I don't know yeah. if they were like scholastic book fair type things. Okay, so which one is this? Okay, the blank, oh, a blank flip book. Okay. Oh, you get to make your own. You get to make your own. Oh, you should totally do some action, Daphne. Yeah, really. Oh, look at that, yeah, look at that. So you can practice. So here is literally a blank flip book so here we have, and then it's like, here we have the the principles again. We know what we want to see in this book, right, Dad? Oh, my goodness. It's like the mascots, right? <laughs> Look at that. So, and you know, and, and that's kind of the reason why um, I picked. So, so there you go. So you could we can, you know, build a, a flip book. Um, that was kind of the reason why I got this, because I have been wanting to, like, play around with animation for a while. And John Celestri has been like, do it, do it, do it. And, um, and, and yeah, and I figured that this would be kind of like a, a neat shortcut for, for me to like, okay, it's like, what, what do I have to like really look at? Um, and, uh, yeah, so we'll, we'll see, we'll see, uh, <laughs> 
Yeah, well, at least and the thing is though, and, and Mike can can say that too because he he, try, he did a short animation. One side for this show and one side for House of Bob. Yeah, oh well. <laughs> well then. <laughs> What is it to quote uh, to quote a, an old Robin Williams skit? It was light, it was dark, it was light, it was dark, it was light, it was dark. <laughs> so, so yeah, so this is yeah. So um, I'm not sure if maybe uh, if you go. I think the name of the campaign was Blanco. I mean, it's like like Blanco is I guess the well Blanco just means blank in Spanish, but uh, um, <laughs> right, but. Uh, Oh, let's see. It's the okay. So the name of it is Flipped Boku. Uh, Flip B O K U. So um, you can find that. You should be able to find it on Kickstarter still. I don't know whether they have like a separate store. Uh, if you can, you know, so you can pick these up yourselves. But uh, uh, oh yeah, here we go. So uh, animated by Raúl García. So that that's I knew that there was a you know what it is I'm so used to people using like like goofy pseudonyms on YouTube that it's like oh his name must be Blanco no asshole it just it's just blank pages in Spanish <laughs> <laughs> so, so so yeah um, you know so yeah so that's uh, yeah that's okay look at that and it, and it just slides together in this nice little kit. But I'm gonna keep the box though, because I think it's it's uh, morning Nick. It's it's a nice way to keep everything kind of neat and together because it just it just fits kind of perfectly like that. So, um, so there we go. So that's what uh, that's my uh, my kick startled for the day. <laughs> HR is being distracting this morning. Oh no, because uh, it's like, aren't you supposed resources. to be nocturnal? Yeah, exactly. Hamster resources. Well, you know what? It is the same thing. Like, like the parrot. It's like, they go, oh, they're online now. I should start acting up. Although he's, uh, you know, he's not acting up right now. So, okay. So there we go. So I hope um, that was, uh, you know, interesting. Morning, this. Oh, good morning. Hello, Doctor Squatch the soap. Yes, and that is, um, yeah, Doctor Squash. Squatch, Dr. Squatch. <laughs> That's a soap that that JD buys on the regular when he can, um, and it's actually that the packaging is really really nice. I mean, I have to give a lot of like these independent, um, oh, the, in, in, these independent companies that like, they're really putting a lot of effort in in their packaging, and and the Dr. Squatch ones are really nice. Also, they're very nice soaps too. So. <laughs> Dr. Squatch. Not sponsored. Not sponsored, but we should be. <laughs> Call us. <laughs> oh my goodness. So so yeah, so that uh, so that's uh that that's what uh I, I've been uh so that's what I got uh this this week as well. I'm gonna start Oh my god what He's happened? Sorry. Uh oh Oh, the soap. Yes. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, oh, it's human resources too, because we give that many fucks. Right. Yeah. Exactly. Oh. Oh. Is the is uh, the uh, <laughs> yeah, he's making his cameo. He's, he's making his rounds. Yeah. He's uh, doing the uh, making sure we're following all the rules. <laughs> <You know? laughs> so. Uh, so yeah. So. Um, so yeah, so speaking of Kickstarter, speaking of Kickstarter, let, let's everybody put their thinking caps on. Um, so there's so there was this question that I saw the other day. Um, and the thing is though, this has been a question that's been popping up for uh, a while now. I, I mean, pretty much ever since Kickstarter. I mean, what like Kickstarter's been around for what, like 10 years or something? Yeah. I don't know. Yeah, so, and this question has been popping up since it was founded. And there just comes a point, especially now that when every, anybody asks this question, I immediately think that they're being disingenuous with it. Um, well, you know, it's like, you can't just show up here. <laughs> <laughs> you have to work, you. Yeah, yeah. It's like, you know, we, we expect, you know, 
We, you know, it's like, it's like, yeah, it's like, you know, you're a sexy chat, but you know, you have to work the chat part too. <laughs> so, so the question is that I, that I saw is, um, is our creators depending way too much on Kickstarter for income hmm. for their income? And I think in and of itself, it could be just a rather simple, you know, just, just a rather standard question. Um, but like I said, it's like I've been seeing variations of this question since Kickstarter started. And and by now, I'm very suspicious of it. Because, right. because usually that question is asked with for lack of a better way of explaining it, because it sounds almost like, like, like a grade school schoolyard shit. But, but the thing is, though, that's, that's kind of where it comes from is that it's like, Oh, it's like, you know, it's like, Oh, you depend too much on Kickstarter. It's like, you know, if you really could make money, you know, you could be doing it in real ways, you know? And and that's kind of how I feel the question is usually asked, if not outright phrased. Like in the beginning, you know, it's like there was like this whole thing where it's like, oh, I wouldn't do Kickstarter. That's begging. That's begging. If you can make that, if you can make real money on Kickstarter, you could you could sell your stuff to a publisher. You know, and and it was kind of like like a little snooty like that, like. And, and uh, so, so this is kind of like my take on it. So, so the thing is, is that nobody asks it, nobody asks you whatever job you have, nobody asks you, don't you depend too much on your job? Yeah. Right. It's like, it's, nobody it's kinda, asks kinda you that. Yeah. It's like, it's like, who, who, it's like, Mike, Jimmy, do you depend too much on your, on, on your job? You know, everybody in the chat, do you, it's like, don't you think you would depend a little too much on your job? You know, I mean, that's such a stupid question, right? I mean, it's like nobody, no normal person asks that question. But for some reason with Kickstarter and, and in certain cases, you know, people who make money on YouTube, like for some reason, because of, of the fact that it is online and we can do this from home, that... Um, I don't think I can think of a single creator that does depend on Kickstarter. Right. Like I mean, not to not to to sell, yeah, maybe get it out. Right. But uh like my Jimmy said, like you barely cut even. Right. You know, I it's mean like, there's yeah. the exception, but not all right. But there's always the exception. Like there's always the that the one or two percent that um that are always going to benefit greatly from a new platform you know but um yeah but but like i said it's like i think it's also like the people who do youtube videos and tries to um you know like like the people who don't use it are the ones who don't understand it and then are they the ones that are asking dopey questions like this well why don't you go get a real job it's like well what makes you think that this isn't a real job you know, that it's like that this isn't real effort. I mean, even even if you're not making money off of it, you know, or making a lot of money off of it, um, there's still real effort into supporting a YouTube channel, into running oh, a yes. Kickstarter. You know, I, I mean, it's like, look, I'm still exhausted from the effort of what felt like a three-month campaign because technically I started... It kind of was. <laughs> I started promoting Eagle Raven in January. And then ran the campaign in March. And now we're in April. And boy, are my arms tired. <laughs> Actually, it's more my, my lower back, <laughs> my hips. But it's like, <laughs> you, know? Um, you know, and the thing is, though. Um, right. You know, it, it's like, it's not that. Now, it's not that I depend. Now, here's the thing. Kickstarter and crowdfunding in general made it a lot easier for everybody to finally get their projects out in a way that we have direct access to an audience 
uh, to our audience. We don't need to depend on Diamond. We don't need to depend on begging our local comic book shops to pick up our stuff. We don't need, you, you know, it's like, so So for a fee, for a percentage, um, Kickstarter created a platform where it's like, okay, we can get the audience. You supply the content, you know? And, and mm. it's like, hey, it worked. You know, I mean, it's like, um, it's like, I, I think that we only started to, I guess, like bloom again as a comic book, as, as a comic book publisher, you know, with Eager Raven, with Tall Tales, with, with the Oswald Chronicles because of crowdfunding, you know, because, you know, it's like the other avenues, they're, they're tougher to, 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 to massage into a usable system. Um, and also what I found with crowdfunding is that for me, at least, it's definitely a more efficient use of my time when it comes to promoting and making my books and selling them or whatnot, as opposed to going to a convention, as opposed to trying to get my, my stuff into Diamond, uh, which, you know, Tall Tales is banned from, by the way. So <laughs> it's not like that option was there for me anyway. So um you know, it, it's like, you know, from, and, and I've already done the thing where it's like, I spent an entire week calling up every single comic book store in the, the, the tri-state area in New York, in, in New York City. You know, I called up, it must've been like 30 or something stores. And you know, and you know what I got out of that? I got, I, it, it's like, I got probably as many polite fuck offs as I did for each store, you know, like only one, it's like only one store even considered consignment, but told me right, but, but told me straight off. Well, we can put your book in our store, but you're the one that's going to have to handle the inventory. What? Like I, I don't keep track of anything. Okay. So it's like, so what the fuck? So, you know, and, and then it's like, they're all the way in Brooklyn too. So it's like, no, fuck that shit. You know, it's like, it's like, I have to, I have to do your job too. So, so yeah. So it's like, no, it's like, so, so yeah. So it's like, so I had all these stores telling me, like I said, they either gave me a polite fuck off or they said, are you a diamond? No, they were not interested. So yes, I did. I even, yes, I did. And they said, if you're not in diamond, we're not interested. You know, so so yeah, there was not one store that I could get my books into. So it's like, yeah, so Kickstarter comes along, right? And all of a sudden I have access to all these people who want to buy my book directly from me. All of a sudden, by sitting in front of my computer and hammering social media, I'm, I was able on my last campaign to get 170 something people to buy my book. I made right. $6,300 for that effort that I put in. I can't remember the last time I made that type of money at a convention. Right. You know, and it's like, and I didn't have to lug shit into a car or through right. the subway. I didn't have to like set up a table. I didn't have to worry about hotel rooms. I didn't travel. have to worry about if the whole travel, the whole taking the time out. You know, it's like, I didn't have to worry about that. So I was able to sit in my computer, hammer social media and and, and not only that, it's like have Nita and a whole bunch of people help me with it, you know, at their leisure, mind you, you know, and I was able, well, we, we, because in the end, it's a collective, I mean, it's like, you got, you got to remember, I mean, it, even though it's like, it's a, it's your book in the end, running a crowdfunder is a collective effort. Right. Because we need everybody to get together to help spread the word and everything. So it's not just about you. <laughs> then, Marvie, the problem is, is somebody has to run that shit, too. So we might yeah. just stick with the platforms we have. Right. Exactly. So, um, so yeah. So for me, that's a more efficient use of my time running a Kickstarter. So, 
Okay, would would Eager Raven have existed without crowdfunding? Well, it was already. It was already, right. you know, on on my website. I what I wasn't really working on it that seriously. So if anything, crowdfunding helped me get my shit together with that book and gave me a folk something to focus on that could have like that had like real results that I could work with as opposed to grinding along on each issue and then like, oh, maybe have maybe having one or two people give a shit at a convention. Right. You know, it's like, you know, it's like ever since the demographics at conventions really changed from comic books to media. Right. Comic books have, I mean, it's like, at least for me, I know that's not the case for everyone. It feels like comics took a backseat. You go yeah, in and it's, it's like, like, it's a tougher sell to get people to want to experiment with independent books than it was in the past. Right. Honestly, it's like there was just something about the 90s that really clicked for everybody. And a lot of independent people were able to like, I mean, mind you, a well, lot of the 2000s, we had our Asian invasion. Yeah, exactly. You know, and um, for some reason, we couldn't embrace that as part of our, our culture, too. And right. marry the two. We had to have this. You're either comics or manga. And just now you're starting right. to find that middle ground. Right. Exactly. You know, it's like because because back when we started, if you weren't Japanese and trying to do a manga, who did you get shit on? You know, and, and the thing is that when we were working for CPM, that was exactly, we were ahead of our time. We were one of the first um, American artists, uh, uh, you know, Americans to be working on, on, I guess, like original Japanese content. And we were literally one or two years ahead of our time. And, but now it's like, um, you know, now it's like, it's normal. That it's like you 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 know you see everybody doing manga. It, it's like all over the world. So um, we we probably would have to bring somebody in specifically about novels because that's something that we were just talking about on Monday. Because it's like uh, as it's like because that's something that I dabble in on both. You know, uh, it's like I dab. Oh, it's like I I, I dabble in novel writing, right? Um, and the thing is, though, I could it could it's because I'm a little loath to call myself a writer, writer, because every every piece of writing I do is all Eagle Raven related. I don't I don't do um, anything else but that. Like if you gave me a prompt right now, it, I I would only be able to make it work if it was Eagle Raven related. So I I, I I hesitate to call myself a writer for that, but but I do have like the idea for like novels and, and whatnot and hybrid novel comics and, and, and everything. And, and that's a whole other thing that I'm beginning to learn myself as to like, okay, how do I market this? If my main market is comics, can I get them to read a prose novel? Can I get them to read an illustrated, uh, you know, uh, uh, an illustrated novel? So, uh, but yeah, but we definitely have to uh, get somebody who's specific to novels to uh, to talk about that as well. But you know, we'll we'll, we'll see what we can do with that. So, uh, so yeah, so crowdfunding just turned into a it was it's like in the end, it's like it's just a very efficient way of uh, for me to use my time and create a book. Uh, on you know, so it's very efficient for me to create a book and and to. Uh, and to market it and to have access to those direct sales as opposed to going through a distributor, going through a, a, a middle mat. Wow. Whisper away. I had that. That's the, um, that's the Terry Smith, Paul kid book from back in the day. Right. Um, yeah. So uh, yeah, it's like, I, I, I kind of remember that. Um, so yeah. Um, so yeah, right. so so that's the thing. Um, so so that's the thing. So it's like so when people ask, oh, do you depend too much on crowdfunders? It's like, well, well, as opposed to what, you know? It's right, like, right. Oh, actually, yeah. It's like, and we had Brian K. Morris, but we didn't ask him that specific question. So yeah, probably we should have him back and uh, and ask him about that. Um, 
so uh, so yeah so so whenever i hear somebody ask do you depend too much on crowdfunders my question would uh and that's fine the fact look it's like the fact that i know what you're talking about <laughs> you know means that we're on the same level here we're we're the same old school um you know, because it's like, you know, they're, they're people because, because like, there's still people who think that, that crowdfunding is begging. Yeah, there really are. Yeah. And it's like, you know what, to me, it always seems like it's those bastards that can't figure out how to gain an audience that talks right. about it being begging. And so who's begging the guy that's going to go bankrupt himself, trying to self fucking publish alone. Right. Or yeah. The guy who's going out there straight off the bat, like, hey, I need X amount of dollars to get this right. to point B. Right. Yeah. Help me. Right. And, and you know, like, yeah, yeah. no. Right. Mm. Yeah, exactly. You know, I, I mean, it's like, uh, like, but I remember I, one of the earlier arguments. It's like, oh, if you can raise money on, on your own, you should then you should be able to get a loan from a bank. Like, why would I want to do that? If I can get the money on my own, why would right. I need to get a bank involved? Again, the whole middleman. At least it's like... Thank you. Right, exactly. Like, like it's just kind of weird how they think that it's like, look, people, people support my Kickstarters and they get stuff in return. They're actually exchanging goods, you know, exchanging right. currency for goods and services, you know? Yeah, yeah. Like, you know? Um, so it, it's not like, who's begging? I'm not begging. It's like I'm actually selling you something. Right. I mean, let me let me put it to you like this. Whenever you you watch TV and Coke runs an ad, is Coke begging? Well, no, because Coke's to a point now they don't even have to run an ad. We're gonna go. Well, get well right, exactly. Shit. But the thing is though, it's like, how is it that when us as small marketers, when we market stuff, it that where they look at us like we're begging, but large companies spend billions of dollars on research and development just for the advertising alone. And, but that's not begging. Right. You know? So yeah, it's like always watch out who's asking that question. You know, it's like, because like I said, a lot, it's like, I'm at a point now. It's like, when I hear those questions, um, it's it, I, I'm a, my, my little, uh, I get little red flags waving. Right. It's like, Oh, Biggest Biggest spat I ever had online was over that right there. The, like, the biggest serious, what? The biggest spat I've ever had online. The only time I ever got myself involved in the Twitter trash uh -oh. was over some guy ragging people for Kickstarter. I still funded. Blah blah blah. Yeah, bro, but you're living in your mama's trailer. So <laughs> what? Right. Yeah. Exactly. I, I mean, it's like you know. Yeah. It's like I, I think that the 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 question is disingenuous at best. I, I mean, because I've seen so many people ask it with that angle. Well, if you could do that, why can't you do it legitimately? Yes. And it's like, what does that mean? Um, yeah, it's like, okay, mild devil's advocate. There are folks you only uh, who are only on shows when they are selling things. Yeah, it, and it's true. That's true. Um, it's it's uh, you know there are certain aspects of promoting that. Um, that that is annoying and tedious and and yeah and they're and then sometimes you have to kind of like really remember that just because you don't have a campaign doesn't mean that you stop talking to people right. <laughs> you know that it's like uh yeah it's like but that's kind of like finding your balance uh between between running a campaign and not running a campaign. And, and, and it's gotten like, for me, it's gotten to a point where it's like, like, I kind of understand JD's whole thing, uh, you know, like, like about like having to run a campaign constantly, because if he's not running a campaign, he doesn't feel like he's working. Right. And I'm, I'm actually kind of beginning to feel like that because it's like, it's like, Oh, Oh snap. I gotta get the next campaign running because it's like, you kind of end up on that treadmill and you want to keep that momentum. But I think the breaks are important also, you know, just not just for yourself because running campaigns is it's, it's work. It's work. No matter what people who, you know, it's like you're, you're doing just as much work as anybody who goes to a nine to five. And mind you, I don't even know why we still use the word nine to five anymore because nobody has a nine to five job anymore. Usually it's like what, eight to six or, or, or whatnot. It's like, you know, 
Um, and even then you still have to be on call, but that's a whole different thing. Um, yeah, it, it's Thank like, you. yeah, exactly, exactly. And, and that's what crowdfunding does. It, it, it allows us, it, for me, the actually bigger than the money is the audience, is realizing that I could build an audience. Right. And, and see the, and see what that looks like directly. Hey, Eric Ragin, we have several shows that would love to have you on, especially if you're not crowdfunding. Right. Yeah. Because I think that in the end, right, exactly. Yeah. It, it's like, you know, we all have, you know, we all have something to offer when we're not, you know, yeah, it's it's like even when we're not crowdfunding. So, like I said, it's like just because you're not crowdfunding doesn't mean you don't you don't have to you know you you don't talk to people anymore, because part of part of marketing is is making sure, especially nowadays, you know, being online, being you know on streams and 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 getting it's like part of it is like having people know who you are. And getting to know you, I mean, as personally as they can get to know you. Um, don't peek in our windows and don't crawl in bed with us when we're sleeping. That's right. No, no, that, that's weird. Yeah, it's like no, yeah, no, don't, don't peek in the windows. We have House of Bob for that. <laughs> now, now on, uh, I think I figured out a regular schedule for House of Bob. Um, it's going to be the last Saturday of every month. I think that that might be a, a good schedule. There we go. Yes, House of Bob, drawing night nice stream. <laughs> Join me and Nita as we work on work on artwork and have conversations that uh, is not fit for the day crowd. So uh, yeah, so I think that uh, every the last Saturday of every month. That I think that's a good schedule. I think that's a good schedule for me. So then I don't have to keep guessing. Oh, where would we? With me? Look, whatever the last Saturday is, that's House of Bob. So, <laughs> um, so yeah, so so yeah, so crowd. Uh, well, you see, that that's the thing. That's the thing. It's it's like look, being on shows and talking all the time. It's like look, we're we're models for cringe. Okay, it, it's like you know, it it's it's. It's something you've got to get used to. And, and sometimes you just have to accept the fact that uh, you really do have to write little post-its to remind you. We what are the is. epitome of cringe. Come we are board. we are the cringe channel, the cringe vlog. You know, so, <laughs> just but, the name is worth it's cringe worthy. Yes, as yes, it's like because it's it's awkward, awkward <laughs> as us. <laughs> so it's, and, and I think that that's, that's just something you just have to work through. The more shows you do, the better you, you get at it. And, you know, that that's kind of just what it is. And I keep getting told that part of our appeal is the fact that we don't act for the camera. Um, we don't, uh, you know, we're just talking. Um, we're just, uh, just, I don't know, being ourselves, because it's like, if anything, probably when I first started doing vlogs and, and doing like, you can see that on my YouTube channel, you go to the very first, uh, very first video where I'm talking and, and I'm sure it's like, it's even more cringe than it is now. Oh, I'll you share know? some cringe later. I'll, I'll repost on my page, my very first vlog. Right. And, and it's just getting used to it. Just, it's like, I think that probably have gotten more uh, used to talking online, you know, used to talking. Um, I don't, I don't, I don't have to admit it is kind of weird feeling like, even though I have Nita there and whatnot, it's, it's like, it still feels like, who am I talking to really? Right. right. <laughs> it's, it's, that's still there. But I, I at least like to think that we didn't turn into characters Right. Because I've seen that a lot, a, yes. a lot of, yeah, a lot of uh, vloggers that they literally turn into characters and it's like, hmm, that's, that's kind of, you know, a weird thing to do. Um, so yeah, like I said, that's, uh, uh, I, I don't know. It's like, you know what? It's like, uh, flattery will get you everywhere. Chris. Yeah, it, exactly. That's, that's what I always what say. Turn red, yo. <laughs> yeah. It's, uh, the, the uh, the I think that the hardest thing when it came to promotion, especially two years ago, the hardest uh, <laughs> yeah, 
the hardest lesson that I had to the hump, the hardest lump I had hump I had to get over was learning, was actually hearing myself say Eagle Raven out loud. I think that that was like the hardest thing for me to get over. It's like, and, and uh, you know, talking about my book out loud, because up until that point, I never really did that. I mean, I, it, it even came to a point where it's like, oh, a lot of my names have to have, I, I need to put like a glossary or something like, like a, a phonetic, uh, enunciation guide. Yeah. An enunciation guide. guide. Yeah. Uh, it's like, I do have it on my uh, website, uh, because I've never said any of it out loud. And then all of a sudden I had to write up all this marketing material that I had to read out loud on shows. And I realized like, holy crap, I've never said these words out loud. You know, I've never said, I never really said Eagle Raven out loud. I've never really said Ed and Ron out loud. I've never, never said like a lot of the, a lot of the words that I use in, in Eagle Raven, I've never said out loud. So it's like, so that was like the weirdest thing to have to get over, you know, is uh, <laughs> now I, I kind of think that it's like, uh, I, I'm kind of over it, <laughs> kind of. I mean, there's still some words. That, uh, yeah, well, you know, <laughs> ish. <laughs> yeah, you see, I think that that's the, that's the real usage of the, you know, <laughs> so you make it, try to, uh, you know, I, I mean, well, yeah, I do get distracted. Yes, <laughs> I think of, uh, I, uh, I I told Nita that I, I probably do have like kind of like undiagnosed ADHD or something. <laughs> you know, but it's like either that or undiagnosed. It's all good. We're all special. Yeah, every yeah everything's undiagnosed. So it's like I probably have that because I get distracted really easily. <laughs> so so yeah, so I could talk about my book more, but then it's like someone has to bring something up that pisses me off. So, um, so where were we? Oh yeah, crowdfunders. <laughs> what? No. What? So, so, so that's so. In the end, so, so crowdfunders. Are we too dependent on crowdfunders, or, or, or is it just another tool that we use until something else comes along? Right. You know, because like, it's not like we're making these platforms. It's like we're literally waiting for these venture capitalists to get their shit together and make these platforms, you know, for us to take advantage of. You know, it's like we're not, you know, so, yeah, so we can only use the tools that are offered, that, that are available to us and offered to us. If there's something, if something better than Kickstarter comes along, trust me, we'll all use that too. But... Uh, <laughs> Yeah, so um, so yeah, so and, and so that's what it is. So it's like so <laughs> you have to say, right, exactly. You see, that's what I have to learn how to. That, that's that's how I have to learn how to pivot. Um, so um, you know, yeah. So it's like yeah, it's just another tool, and we either and, and the thing is, and just because. Because this could be a whole other conversation too. Because it's like just because you see somebody making a lot of money on Kickstarter, you really that doesn't mean that. Yeah, maybe superficially it looks oh oh they're it's like oh they're making real money on Kickstarter, and it's like yeah, but you see, but here's the thing though, you have to remember that it's like yeah, we're making all this money on Kickstarter. But how much of an outlay are we putting out right. in order to get these books done? Right. You know, and especially when you see more complicated Kickstarters. And right. especially if you're a person who has to pay out for everything. And it's, yeah, exactly. Especially if you're the writer that has to hire the penciler, the inker, the, the colorist, right. the, the printer, the, I mean, it goes on and on. And then you've got your stretch goals that you've got right. to cover. Yeah shipping like by the time it's all said and done ain't, it, nobody's no, no yeah it's like you'd be surprised at um at, at how much money people really do walk away with like i mean granted it, it's like okay so you know like like 
Brandon Sanderson raised $41 million. Like, so probably in the end, I mean, the guy is still walking around, is still walking away with a good chunk of change. Oh, for sure. After everything is said and done. But that's the exception. Right, exactly. You know, but it's like when you have like smaller campaigns, and mind you, smaller campaigns can be a $20,000 campaign. Right. You know, and it's like, okay, so it's like, and, and we've met, you know, we've interviewed a lot of people who it's like, okay, so it's like that you're doing these, this campaign that's doing gangbusters and this, that, and the other thing, you're raising twenty, thirty, forty thousand dollars $40,000. But then you start thinking about, okay, so they have, you know, all these variant covers, they have all these tchotchkes that, you know, it's like, they have, you know, it's like, they're, they're the writer. So it's like, so the artwork has to be paid for the colorists, the, the lettering. I, I mean, it's like, um, you know, so in the end, it's like, so a $20,000 campaign could mean that, you know, if, if, you know, you could be walking away with five grand, you know, I, I mean, it's like, okay, congratulations. You just made an average monthly salary. <laughs> if not, you know, the two months average salary, you know, I, I mean, you know, in, in one campaign. So, so that's a whole other thing too, that you have to consider that just because a campaign looks successful, you know, what, what's really the take home on that? Yeah. You Cause 90% of the time, the, the, the goal is the bare minimum. Right. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. You know, because then you have this whole weird thing with marketing where it's like with marketing on, on a crowdfunder where you don't want to completely have your goal cover your cost because then it looks a little too daunting and then people right. won't support your campaign because like, oh, they're never going to make that much. Right. But at the same time, you still have all these people to feed. So right. it's kind of like it's it's a whole game. So. It, it, well, it's 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 a game that has real consequences. So, uh, so yeah. So watch out for people who kind of like try to diminish that effort that you put on crowdfunding because they don't understand how it works, and that's usually what it is. Um, yeah, exactly. It's like they just see. It's like oh well, you know. It's like right. oh, are you? Uh, you know, you're, you're making all this money. So it's like, what do you need to do crowdfunders for? It's like, hello, I'm making this money because I'm doing crowdfunders. But again, it's just a tool. It's not that I'm dependent on it. It's just an efficient use of my time. Like I said, it, it's, it's certainly doing a crowdfunder is certainly more efficient for me personally than going to a convention. You know, like, no, no, go ahead. Go ahead. I'm going to answer your question. That's because it, in comics, it all depends on who's you suck. Right. You know, I, like I mean. The rest of the, everything. Right. Else. I mean, it depends on who you know. I mean, and that's the thing too. It depends on who you know and, you know, and who, who's, you know, who's supporting you and, and, and whatnot. It's like, there's a whole lot of variables uh, when it comes to being successful, uh, I guess, in anything. You know, it, it's like. Um, you know, again, it's like it's like that's why when you look at other crowdfunders, you have to be careful who you study, because I know there's this whole thing. Oh, I only want to study successful people. Well, here's the thing. Success doesn't leave a trail, but failure does. Right. You know, it's like you want to you want to do you want to study more of the middle ground people. You know, it, you know, and it's like, you know, and even study the ones who didn't make it. Especially I mean, the ones that didn't make it first, especially the good ones that don't yeah, make, it. make it. You know, Because 90% of the time, if they're a really good campaign and it's got pretty art, looks like the story is going to be good. The lettering looks yeah. nice on the, on the, on the crowdfund crawl. There's a chance they made a rookie mistake of yeah. trying to ask for too much money mm -hmm. or they, they weren't out there promoting. Right. You know, so it's like, yeah, so you have to, you, you have to like really pay attention who you're studying, you know, because it's like, you, it's like, look, you can, you can stare at Todd McFarlane's campaign all day long. You know, you're, you're not going to make that type of money, no matter what you do, 
Because you know why? Because you're not Todd McFarlane. You don't have that history that Todd McFarlane has. So, so studying his campaigns are, are actually kind of useless. You know, because Todd McFarlane, you know, it, 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 he could he's at a point where he could do anything yeah. and it'll be successful. He's above you. Right. Wow. So it's a, yeah, so reality. you don't, you don't yeah. want to study. You know, like we, we keep, Tony Mark. You know, so yeah, so you have to say so crowdfunding is a lot more than just, ooh, why are you doing that? No, it's right. it's an actual job. It's it's actual work to do a crowdfunder. Um, it's exhausting. It's the reason why that whole after campaign, it's that whole after just campaign, to market it. I can't yeah. imagine being the one fulfilling it. And no, for fucking, real. Yeah, no. Right. It, it's like uh, you know that that after that after campaign depression is real. You know, it's like there is such a low you you hit after a campaign ends that you really do need to spend a week kind of recovering from it. You know, especially if you've been like hammering at it for three months, you know, and there are people who, who do that for six months. I mean, it's like, how? Yeah. No, no how way. How the fuck I, do you do that? I, I'm right. exhausted. The energy that it requires. So, so yeah. So uh, beware of people who ask you, are you dependent on crowdfunders? Because ju th that just tells me that there, there, there's more, they're being more bitchy than curious. Yes, but to study him now, Glenn, to use him as an example right. where yeah. you want to be, where you're, it's like, you're not a god. Right. You know, you know, yeah. But you can like, be. You can reach that status. You know, but work. it's like, yeah, but that's the thing. It, it's like, you know, um, so, it, you know, so, so that's the thing. Just, you know, um, it, it's like, uh, well, you, you study, you study campaigns. And and you model what looks like <laughs> you model what what looks like like look we study campaigns all the time and we're always picking out little things that people do that is like oh this could work this could work this could work this could work you know and um, so yeah so that's that that's I mean it's like really this, this conversation we we could you know go on all sorts of different tangents but. Um, I guess to go back to the original uh, intent is uh, watch out for people who who ask disingenuous questions that are more to knock you down than it is because they're curious. Um, just just be careful with that because the, these these are people they they just want to suck your energy. Right. Because they, you know, it's like they don't want to do, they don't want to put in the work or they don't want to do it or they don't understand what you're doing. So instead of minding their business and letting you be, they want to suck that energy out of you because they're trying to, to, to drag out. Oh, you're doing something that makes them feel shitty about what they're doing. So they want to pull you down to their level. You know, the whole crabs in a bucket thing. But as someone had said, I had read, we keep talking about crabs in a bucket as if a bucket is a crab's natural habitat. Because crabs in the wild don't do this shit, you know? So, so, so yeah, so, so remember, it's like that bucket is not your natural habitat. So... <laughs> So there, so so you shouldn't you shouldn't be in a bucket. So because, go home. Yeah, go home. <laughs> go home. Go home. So on this Friday, we'll end it on that note. Go home. <laughs> go home. Work on your crowdfunders. You know, you know, be a, you know, it's like study, study other crowdfunders, but be aware of certain things that have nothing to do with you. <laughs> you right. know, it's like just just be aware of that. Um, so yeah, so on that note, that's all I got, Nita. How, how about you? That's, I'm good. I'm good. Yeah. yeah. So, good. Uh, so there we go. So I got to go buy legs <laughs> at Ikea trip. Um, uh, so uh, on that note, um, I just want to thank everybody joining us, uh, uh, in the chat, uh, in, in this thing, I see the 11 people are watching us. I don't know where you guys are watching us from, but thank you for watching us anyway. I'd like to thank everybody in the chat, uh, for joining in you. It's like, like I said, I mean it when I say you guys are sexy and chatty. 
You know, both. <laughs> we can be both here. <laughs> yeah. And so I will be on, uh, so, so you can catch me on Sketchy Saturday tomorrow with Mike Jimmy, with Marvy. Uh, also, they're going to have Rich Perota on. So uh. we're going to have a good time tomorrow at uh, 10 a.m., sketchy saturday hopefully i'll have my legs by then my table will be set up a little bit more properly who knows we'll see so we'll be working on some on some stuff i got plenty of stuff i gotta work on so there's always going to be something um so yeah catch me there you can catch us again on monday at 11 a.m uh we'll be back here starting your week with whatever nonsense you want us to talk about <laughs> so uh so yeah any uh any last cards oh it's uh, it, uh any final cards like uh you can contact us at uh raging avc g at gmail.com if you have any questions any comments any ideas for the show do you want are there certain guests you want us to get on uh try to get on an interview you know it's like i said it's like uh novels is something that i'm curious about so we'll probably try to get somebody to talk about that aspect of it so because in the end we're all readers right so there shouldn't be a difference between comics right. and, and and novels but in the meantime speaking of crowdfunding we're in fulfillment phase now so get five percent of your next gemini mail mailer order with using our coupon code rage into um even at five percent every bit helps especially in this economy <laughs> so and be sure to catch randy zimmerman sunday for sunday funnies oh yes absolutely i mean it's like yeah you can catch us it, you'll be able to find subscribe to rage and Two, find your next favorite uh show to listen to um we, we have something coming. going on yeah we have something going on every day of the week we got more coming more craziness more uh more comic book oh, nonsense insanity. You know, yeah. So, so, so keep uh, so keep an eye out. Subscribe. Hit the button. Hit the bell. Get notified whenever we upload. And on that note, as always, uh, eat your food, mind your business, uh, stay moisturized, and do the work. Because when you do the work, you never have to fake your accomplishments. Everybody, have a great weekend. And uh, we'll see you Monday. What do you got, Nita? Hit the button. Oh, as always. Mm -hmm. <laughs>